from the Library of Congress in Washington, D.C. When you scan a photograph, the scanning device creates a digital image consisting of tens of thousands of tiny dots. This process is referred to as digitizing. Digitizing is not limited to text or images. You can also digitize video and audio. In this video series, we will just look at scanning photos. First, prepare the scanner and photos. Make sure the glass is clean of smudges, dust, and hair. Wipe the glass with a plain, lint-free cloth dampened with water. Do not spray the water directly onto the scanner. Spray it on the cloth. Wipe the inside of the scanner lid also. Next, wipe off the photograph with a dry, anti-static cloth. You can find these in a camera store. This will clean the photo and prevent it from attracting more dust particles and hair through static electricity. Place the cleaned photo face down on the scanner. Don't touch the glass when you place the photo. You may smudge the glass and have to clean it again. Try to slide the photo against the side and up into the corner for the best alignment. Some software will detect separate photos or items. Leave one half inch between the photos to help the software recognize them as separate items. Close the lid gently so the photos remain aligned with the scanner bed edges. Once you have prepared your scanner and photos, it is time to set the properties for the photo scan. In your computer, open the scanner software. There are two important settings the software will ask you about. It will ask you about details of the digital image, details such as the number of dots per inch, whether the image is color or grayscale, and so on. The software will also ask you about the type of file you want to save the image as, such as TIFF or JPEG, and the type of image compression you want. Different software packages will ask about this in different order. If the paper photo you want to scan is black and white, and you see a menu choice of grayscale or color, select grayscale. If the paper photo is color, select color. A digital image, grayscale or color, consists of tens of thousands of tiny dots called pixels. One element to adjust in your scan is bits, or binary digits, of data per pixel. The more bits per pixel, the more information the pixel contains. The most commonly used scan setting is 8 bits per pixel for grayscale. Some scanners may also offer you 16. And 24 bits per pixel for color, although some scanners may also offer 48. With more bits per pixel, you can have a bit more to work with if you intend to edit your digital photos later. Remember that increasing bits per pixel increases data, so it increases the size of the file. Dots per inch, or DPI, is a measurement of pixel density. Image specialists use the more precise term pixels per inch, or PPI. However, since documentation for commercial scanners use the term DPI, we will stick with the term DPI in this video. The more pixels you have in a one square inch space, the greater the detail an image can hold. More DPI is not always better. You can only scan so much detail from a photo. Beyond that limited amount of detail, more DPI cannot add anything of value. So there are optimum settings for different photo sizes and types. For most personal work, 300 to 400 DPI is very satisfactory for snapshot prints and for common enlargements at 4x6, 5x7, or 8x10 inches in size. 1400 to 1500 DPI might be best for very small prints or photographic slides. These hold a lot of detail in a small area, so you want to capture more dots per inch. If you want a close-up, such as an enlargement of a face in a crowd, increase the DPI until you get the size that you want. Keep in mind that the quality may not be as good once you've changed the DPI. Photo negatives also hold a lot of detail, 
So for negatives, select a minimum of 1500 to 2000 dpi. Remember that increasing dots per inch increases the file size. Scanner software saves your scanned photo as a digital file. The most common file types for digital photos are TIFF and JPEG. The main difference between TIFF and JPEG files has to do with compression, squeezing down the digital data to make a smaller file. For TIFF, there are usually options labeled No Compression or Uncompressed, and another option labeled LZW. Saving as uncompressed is fine, but the LZW compression option will cut the size of the file in half without losing any digital data. This means that your saved TIFF file retains the maximum amount of digital data that your scanner can provide. In contrast, saving an image as a JPEG employs a different type of compression, one that image professionals call lossy compression because a JPEG file loses some of the digital data captured by the scanner. The good news is that you can select JPEG quality levels. If you choose high or highest levels, you will not lose much digital data, and the resulting file will be far more convenient to post on social media sites or email to a friend. Once you have selected a file type to save your scan as, and set your bit depth and DPI, you are ready to scan your photo. Click Preview to make sure you haven't picked up any dust, hair, or artifacts, and that the photo is properly aligned. Then select Scan. After scanning the file, some scanning software will prompt you to assign a file name, or it will automatically assign a file name to your file. If it assigns a file name, you can either keep that file name or you can change it. Renaming the file will not affect the contents of the file. In either case, we recommend that you rename the file to help you find the file later. Many people include the date in the file name, at least the year or the combined year and month. If your file names lead off with year, month, followed by a descriptive word or two, then in your computer folder, the files will sort in chronological order. We also recommend that you save two versions of your digital image, a master version and a working copy. Keep a TIFF as the master and a JPEG as the working copy, usually with the same file name, but a different file extension. It is a good practice to keep them in two separate folders on your computer. Those who adopt the two version approach typically do not edit or clean up the master image, they keep the original as it was scanned. Then, at a later time, they take their JPEG working copy and clean it up as appropriate, cropping for best effect, rotating as needed, fixing red eyes, brightness, contrast, and other features. Remove each photo from the scanner by slipping a piece of paper under it and lifting it. Avoid touching the glass with your fingers. Once you've created your digital images, you need to give some thought to managing them. Best practice is that you maintain at least three copies of your images in three different locations on different types of storage media, such as hard drives, USB drives, and CD or DVD media. For more information, please visit digitalpreservation.gov and digitizationguidelines.gov. This has been a presentation of the Library of Congress. Visit us at loc.gov.